adaptable to. So now the fifth skills uh, a self-regulated person have, that is active listening and communication. So I have talked about active listening already. So here I'm not going to talk much. Then the sixth one is resolution. So what is conflict resolution? So I think, uh, okay. It's okay now. Okay. So, so then this conflict resolution, uh, definitely it's a, it's a skills. So there are five types of uh, conflict resolution. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it, but definitely a self-regulated person as he knows like himself and he knows like how to control first himself and then control others. Because if you want to manage others, you need to manage yourself first. So a self-regulated person can only resolve conflicts because he or she can take the rational decision. So again, I'm talking about rational decision, right? Come yourself or then try to get your signal uh, be into the uh, decisive or rational part of your brain and then think about others and then resolve, resolve the conflict. Now, the one is problem solving and innovation. So, uh, try to be self-regulated person. They know themselves and they are very good learner and they are trying to find new ways. So these new ways, new ideas, when they are seeing these new ways are coming, new ideas are coming, they, are try, they, are, they become a very good problem solver. So suppose uh, one, one experiment is not working. So you are going to search for other resources or other kind of chemicals or other way of uh, designing this, the same experiment with a little bit of change. So you are adaptable as well as you are innovative as well as you are good problem solver. And then the eighth one is time management. Definitely, as you know yourself, you know how to manage yourself, your own self, you know what time you need to work, what time you need to take rest, what time you need to have some fun. So you know yourself and manage your time according to your schedule. And when you are going to work, you are going with full focus, right? So time management will come with a self-regulated person. So this is kind of, few strategies I'm showing here. Uh, there are, again, many more strategies, but I have chosen seven. And I'm going to um, like share the sources with Dr. Mojumdar. Uh, he is going to share with you uh, guys. And then the first one, I'm just going to talk about the first one so this is the very, uh, our, brain, our brain requires 20% of our uh, oxygen, like total oxygen. So here you can see like if, and this 20% of oxygen, uh, from this 20% of oxygen, brain first use this oxygen to, our, to control our basic function, like our sight, our, feel uh, like our, um, like breathe, et cetera. But the rest amount of the, this 20%, what is left, these are only used to think and your mood change, your mood repair in, in this type of work, which is complex process. So if you are not actually breathing right, like if you are breathing shallow, or if you are not breathing like a consistent or 
consistently or uh, deep breathing or good, like good amount of oxygen, your brain is actually deficient of oxygen. So then your brain only try to uh, work with uh, the uh, low amount of oxygen and it will try to work with the basic stuff rather than your thinking, like rational thinking. So that's why it says that breathe right. So that's why when we, are, we got agitated, we got angry with something, you can see like, like, you're, like the, the other person opposite to you can say, okay, take a deep breath, right? Because he or she is actually trying to sh tell you that take a deep breath means take full oxygen so that your rational brain your frontal part of the brain can have some oxygen to think over the basic actions. So I'm not going to talk about other six strategies. Uh, so definitely I will share those strategies later. Then my third skill uh, is motivation. So we, we are motivated uh, because we are here for learning. So definitely we have passion for learning. We are motivated to learn. So we are here today. And also motivation is kind of a internal process or a drive or a push, uh, which actually like by which you can actually accomplish your goal. Uh, and you are not giving up anything on the halfway. So you need to have motivation if you really want to achieve your goal. So, so here I'm actually quoting this motivation definition from Very Well Mind. Uh, so here definitely uh, I'm, what I'm saying, like this is the driving force to achieve your goal. So here, I, 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 when I was making those slides, I was reading some article and I really love one, one article I can share with you. Like they're saying like motif plus action. So it's motivation. So motif, what do you mean by motif? Motif means like the reason, right? Reason behind any work. Right? What is the reason? What is the motive? We, when we read a detective, detective series or detective stories, we say, oh, what are the motive of this uh, criminal? So what are the reasons? And then plus action. Action means your work, your doing. So what are the reason behind your work? Right? What are the drive? behind your work, why you are actually doing this work, right? As I have just said, like try to write down three reasons for in each and, each and every work you are doing, right? Write down the reasons. So what are the reasons? And this is actually your motivation. So importance of motivation is like a motivated person definitely overcome the laziness. He or she can pay attention to the task at hand. Then definitely they fight the procrastination to get started because if you are not motivated to do something, definitely you are just procrastinate this. You are just delaying uh, this work. Oh, I will do tomorrow, then tomorrow, then tomorrow. Tomorrow will never come. Right? That means you are not actually motivated to do this work. So if you are motivated, you don't procrastinate. Okay. So here I'm just showing like what are the consequences of being a motivated person. Like you enjoy your work, you perform task well, you strive to achieve goal, because you are motivated, so you are not procrastinating and you are actually doing the work. Then you motivate others because you know what? 
we are always saying our, to our students, like try to have a positive peer group because positive peer group means like everybody is motivated to a one goal. So if one person is motivated, it's kind of a contagious. Motivation is contagious, okay? So one person is motivated, like one person motivates other, this person motivates other two. So this kind of a motivated group or motivated team. So motivate others and then when your employee or your boss or your supervisor or your teacher is seeing that you are motivated, not only you are motivated, you are motivating others to do or finish the work, you naturally, you will become a reliable worker or you also be the satisfied worker. And ultimately you can create a positive and productive work environment by a high level of motivation because you are not the only person who is motivated, you motivate others. So the whole team is motivated, right? So the whole work environment is motivating, motivated. Okay, so as I have said, like motivation. So we all are different, like from my last webinar, I'm saying these things, like we all are different. So don't try to compare with anyone first of all. And we all have different, different motivational factors. So it doesn't mean that you are motivated for your motivational factor will be the same as your uh, neighbors or as your peers. So everybody has their own motivational factors. But the thing you have to do, the most important thing you have to do just write down the motivational factors, your own motivational factors, right? What motivates you, okay? Establish your own motivational factor first before doing any work so that you can come back to these motivational factors and see, oh, I was motivated for this or by these motivational factors, oh, Okay, let's go and start working. So here, the motivational types are broadly categorized by like uh, intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. So what is intrinsic motivation? You can see like this girl is actually working or uh, studying uh, like from inside. Right, so this motivation comes from inside. So this is not for external, like she doesn't want to have a good grade. She just wants to learn. So, and our develop, development, personal development. So this type of motivation, which comes from within, it's called intrinsic motivation. But for someone, he, is actually working for good grades or money or fame or praise. So these type of motivational factors, which have internal, like, sorry, external force or external parameter, this is extrinsic motivation. So it doesn't mean that he's bad or she's good or she's bad, he's good. No, 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 it's not like that like what motivational factors you have, right? This, this matters. So it can be come from inside, it can come from outside. Next, there are four elements of uh, motivation. Like Daniel, it's according to Daniel Goldman, when he was doing his research, he is seeing that these type of ele elements, as, uh, these four elements, is actually make up, making up the motivation, like personal drive to achieve. So it's is kind of like it's come coming from your own your self motivation. Then when you are committed to a goal, maybe it's organizational goal, maybe it's your personal goal, doesn't matter. But you need to commit to one goal. Then you need to take some initiative what this initiative means. Initiative means when you are seeing some opportunity, act on that, 
okay and initiative needs courage and risk management so when you are courageous enough to take something or to act on some opportunities go ahead as well as you need to when you are you are taking an initiative you need to think what are the risk because probably you are the first person who is going to take this initiative so probably you don't know what are the risk right what are the risk uh, coming right so you need to calculate the risk before taking any initiative so try to uh, do some risk management so courage and risk management is is a combination uh, like initiative is a combination of these two and then optimism i already talked about optimism before so those four elements are actually making up motivation then some strategies to develop self motivation so it's kind of like passion so put passion in your career so definitely what is your passion what this is your motivation so if you are passionate about something if possible you can put your passion into your career and this career will be awesome for you but another thing i should say and i want to say that for everybody it's not possible okay so everybody it's not that uh, much uh, i can say i i can i'm i'm not believing i am not a good believer of luck but i can say like it's a opportunity everybody uh, sometimes doesn't have the opportunity to work on their passion okay so that's why i can say like whatever you are working try to enjoy okay because sometimes like some people can work with passion like can have a career with passion but sometimes uh, there are because career is a combination of multiple factors okay personal factors professional factors so every time we cannot get that but we if we know ourselves we can work on that we can work on our passion side by side okay so then try to have a good routine as i have said during my time management skills like definitely try to have a good routine and then you can set your goals uh, because goals setting goal is a element is an element of motivation then definitely focus because focus is one thing you need to have and focus means uninterrupted focus okay if you are working some on something focus on it pay your uninterrupted um, attention uh, so focus your whole energy on that task if you want to have a if you want to take a break take a break after few minutes if you just see my last webinar i i was showing like how to chunk your time how to block your time and how to take a break because because some person can uh, some people can work continuously some cannot work continuously they need to take break both of them are right both strategies are working but the main is main focus is focus when you are working pay your full attention to that then what's your why what that does mean it's kind of like know your reason that why you are doing this work so i have already talked about this reason like like how to write the reason three reasons you need to know behind each of your work at least and then talk to yourself that how these reasons are going to impact your life so definitely motivation is the same thing know your why and there is a very good video by simon sinek 
So Simon Sinek is nowadays a big figure because he has discovered or he has not discovered, he has uh, shown a, goal, uh, a concept which is called golden circle, okay? So he was sh showing like he, he has a very good TED Talks, okay? So in that TED Talk, uh, he has shown like how to fix your why, how and what. So how to motivate yourself and how to reach your goal, how to achieve your goal. So I, it's, uh, his name is Simon Sinek. You can type on Google and you can see uh, the why, like the uh, golden circle. Then the last one for self-motivation or motivation strategy is do it now. Because as I have said, procrastination. Procrastination can kill us basically, right? So procrastination, you need to fight procrastination. You need to stop procrastinating. Because what you can see, like sometimes we have very boring work. All of us had to do bo bo boring work in our life. Uh, so definitely, but we need to do that. Especially the for me, like it's my personal thing, but for me, paperwork is the most boring work in my life. If you, if you said, ask me to study, I can study for hours. But if you ask me to do some important paperwork, I am procrastinating every time. So, but now I know the strategies. So do it now means just start. Just, just start doing this uh, like unpleasant work. And then you can see after a few minutes, you are kind of still continuing uh, doing this work. So, so just start, so just start. And I also talked about it in my last webinar. And then here I have gathered some strategies for motivating students because I know there are a uh, few professors are here. So if, if they want to see, uh, so there are some strategies for motivating students. And uh, I have taken those strategies from Vanderbilt University from Teaching and Learning Center. So this is kind of the strategies, like get to know your students in at UCLA or in during my training, I have learned like try to uh, recognize your students by their name. So we say name, need, you need to know your students' name. Because you know what, like this is kind of psychology, when you ask someone or address, sorry, I address someone by their name, it's kind of like a happy trigger, right? It's like they, he or she will be very happy. So, oh my God, he or she knows my name, right? So that's why always we ask at UCLA, like uh, on the very first day of our class, we ask them, uh, we asked them to make a name tent. So we gave them a paper and they just fold it in triangle shape and they write down their name. And for first few weeks, whatever answer or whatever responses they are giving to us, we ask them, okay, just uh, raise your name tent so that we will be habituated with their name. So get to know your students is a very good or get to know their names and talk to them. It's a very good motivational strategies for students. And there are a few more strategies I have written here. So if someone wants to know more, uh, they can come to this uh, slide later. Okay, 